everybody, and welcome to the Bronx Muchachos. It's Alex with Danny. What up? With Dave. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? And with Manny. What's up, boys? How we doing? Doing well, doing well. So, gentlemen, want to talk about this homestand that we just had? Yes, David, uh, you go first, my friend. I'm sure you have plenty to say. Paul, <laughs> <laughs> well, it feels great to be back after having a, having a last week off due to work. Uh, contrary to popular belief, we still do have regular jobs other than doing this. Um, so, yeah, last week, um, awesome baseball. It was a roller coaster ride. Uh, didn't really expect them – expect to be feeling like we're playing playoff baseball in April and kind of crazy how we think down the road of how much of an impact these games in April can potentially have on the playoff picture going forward. So, um, yeah, I think they got off to a great start against Boston going two and one and then splitting with Toronto. Um, I think they're on a, they're in a good place right now, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. That's definitely you should listen to me and Danny a little bit more because me and Danny were saying it for what two, three weeks basically that yep. the beginning of this series was gonna be the part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're baseball savants, Alex. That's exactly what it just, just comes down to. <laughs> oh damn. Just, everybody should just listen to us all the time. Your boy Glaber ain't no baseball savant, though. I'm gonna say that right now after last night. My gosh. Wait, wait. So are we officially talking about players now? Because no matter what number Joey Gallo wears, he still strikes out. So I yeah, just he, he's, 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 no, he, he, he's a lost <laughs> cause. No matter what number he wears, this number of 42, he's still oh, he's still gonna strike out. Trash that guy. Like, oh my gosh. Well, there's some peripheral numbers that are good with Joey Gallo. Um that leads you to believe that he's in the ball hard. He's just getting unlucky. Right now he's striking out a little bit more past couple days. He's probably Shuck out a little bit more than we would like. Um, but so you're saying that he's going to come around. I want to say that it's pressing. He's just hitting some bad luck. So just that Red Sox series, I, I don't want to go back to it too much, but he had a couple hits in that series. And then uh, game three of this series or game two, mm -hmm. whatever case was, I mm -hmm. think it might have been game two. No, the first game when we got shut out, he had a couple, couple knocks. Um, so hopefully that was going to get him going, but it, it really hasn't. So mm -hmm. Joey's a guy that – in this lineup, you could probably pitch you and, and get him out pretty easily, you know. Yeah. But he's had some relatively good at bats. It's just the ball hasn't fallen for him yet. The only thing I'll say about the Sox series is that it was great to see Rizzo starting off with hitting. Um, so was a little bit of Judge Giancarlo, especially Garrett Cole, though. That beginning struggle, of course, here we go again, right? After seeing the last game he had against Boston, heading into this season facing the same team. You probably would have wanted a little bit of a much better start, but credit to him, he actually shut it down for the rest of the way. So I'm not going to get too iffy about that. Um, but overall, like, the only issue I had with that series was our final game on Sunday. We had an opportunity to take the lead late, left runners on base. Those are things, though, like, I hope it doesn't bite us in the ass later on in, this, in, like, the season. But my main thing was we were winning these, you know, these first games hitting homers, and mm -hmm. we had yet to see the small ball approach. And I think Sunday was the first game where we had that opportunity to at least get a couple guys in, whether it be sock fly or even like a bunt single or something. It just didn't occur. So, you know, that's my only thing. I'm not going to get too picky about it. It's the first series against, you know, the most hated rival team we have in our history. So I'm not going to get too mad about that. Well, one thing that's really burning me with these first couple of games is whenever they shift on Gallo, He's still trying to punch the ball through the right hand side of the field where there's five other dudes standing on the it's like guy, bunt the ball down the third baseline. It's so just so painful to watch watch him come up all the time with the infield on one side of the infield, and he's like, There's this big hole on the left hand side. Now I'm gonna try to put it where four other guys are standing. It's just sit the situate they need to get better with situational baseball. Mm -hmm. Well, they they did pretty good over the past couple of days against Toronto. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, no, no doubt. I'm just saying I, I, I want to see the small things mm -hmm. uh, come to fruition. Because guys. in all retrospect, guys, we know this team can hit homers, right? Like, I think you uh, you you now seeing that Rizzo still has, like, that power. It's like you you have a potential, even four guys having over 20-plus home runs already. Mm -hmm. or, or maybe even more if Gallo gets it going. <laughs> you know what I mean? So. Don't forget Hicks. We need Hicks to get it going too. <laughs> See, Hicks lost a weight, but he's still swinging in. But you know what? 
I'm gonna follow our man Danny's lead. It's still early in the season. We'll, we'll, you know, we'll see how it shapes. I'll, I'll, I'll be quiet, okay? I'll be quiet, but I'm just telling you, Danny. This, I'm smelling some smoke around Glaber Torres. Like, <laughs> oh my no gosh. Smoke. Well, I mean, obviously the the bumble, the bumble, the uh, yeah, the, the, the bumblebee, word. the oh, bumblebee. Oh, yeah, 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 the, yeah, bumble. yeah. the fumble, <laughs> the fumble turned that that double play obviously was not what you want, but. He did come back and hit a home in the very next time he was, you know, up a bat. So that showed some resiliency. Um, DJ looks healthy, which is really nice. And Hicks mm-hmm. is hitting the ball the other way. I told all of you he didn't want to listen. <laughs> no, I'm glad he is. I'm glad I was. I'm glad I'm wrong about that. Because I, I after last year, anyway. But um, yeah, I'm, Hicks I'm is looking actually... good, hitting the ball the other way. Um, the homer was to right field from the right hand side. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, he hints that double play today, which is man miserable to watch with the bases loaded against the O's. But he, but 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 he doesn't hit um, double plays the most often because like what, like last year he might have hit like ten, if that. <laughs> well, he played like thirty games last year too, so it was more than that. I mean. No, it was more than that. <laughs> was it? Well, no, I, I want to yeah. know because. Hang on, I'll look it up. Give me a second. He, he, he has some good stats though when it comes to like hitting to double plays. Like he doesn't hit into double plays that much. So this is you saw his face during that. Like right after he was like he was pissed at himself that he was like, damn, I never uh, do yeah, this. Yeah, I don't blame him. He should be DJ nice. played in 150 yeah. games last year with a torn abdomen. No, no, I said Hicks. 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 Oh, Hicks. 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 Uh-huh. Yeah. But yeah, but the one thing I do gotta say about last night's game, at least about Toronto from the Toronto series, Sevy. Oh my gosh, he! I think when it starts warming up, it's you're gonna see some like velocity come out of that boy. Well, he's oh, I want nine. All I'm gonna say is all these people on Yankees Twitter that are, that have been saying that Severino's done. Oh my he's gosh, finished. He he's washed up. up. It, all of them that have been silenced last night with that performance because <sighs> for a guy that's only pitched six games or now eight games since uh, 2019, mm-hmm. yeah. That performance was stellar, mm-hmm. absolutely stellar. I, I I was on the edge of my seat watching, it, and he even looked better than what he did when he before he got injured. Mm-hmm. That cutter is just nasty to go with that changeup. And like I, I, I gotta say, like even his delivery, it looked way more relaxed than it used to be. Like his delivery back in the day was very very tight. Like it looked like he was just playing catch. Yeah. It didn't yeah. even look like he was pitching. He was just like throw it, okay, right, give me the ball right back. You and to think he's only still only twenty six years old. Oh no, but he's washed up. He's washed up. He's old. He's, yeah. he's you know, yeah, he's, he's retired. He's over the hill. He's retired. I'm gonna say all these Sevy haters better just shut up and just sit They're on. not because they're fucking haters. I'm gonna say it right now, okay? They're a bunch of haters and yeah. Sevy's the only pitcher in baseball to strike out Vladdy three times consecutively. Yeah. The only pitcher. It's like I'll be honest with you, when it comes so. to Sevy, like everyone gets pissed off about Sevy, blah blah blah. But like Sevy is in my opinion. Probably the ace. Okay. Yeah, Garrett Cole is the paid ace, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? Sevy was here before Garrett Cole. And Sevy was doing it before Garrett Cole was mm-hmm. doing it here. Yeah, Alex. And I mean, the, the the whole thing that I think sometimes Yankees fans need to forget that Lu- that Luis Severino is homegrown. Yes. He's not a guy that you paid on an eight-year contract, 300, mm-hmm. 700, you know, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. And so the so the backlash to come out of it, I understand. But you have Tommy John surgery, or you go through what he's been through, and then you tell me how you're trying to do. Uh, Tommy not, John, it, and then exactly. you know, what I mean, listen, listen, it is what it is. Did he have a bad game this weekend? But again, it was his first ever game pitching again in quite some time, and knowing that you know what, like I need to see what I have. It wasn't the best performance, but hey, you build off that. You build off the positives, and he came out last night in a delay, right? Knowing mm-hmm. that. He probably thought that the game was at seven. All of a sudden, you have to sit there for two, two and a half hours, which I'm so hey, surprised let, the game even happened. Hey, let's be real, man. Let's be real. If it would have been Garrett Call, like, I love Garrett Call, too, but, like, come on. If Billy Crystal pissed him off on opening day, a two-hour <laughs> rain delay would have screwed his whole day up. And that's now it's the most issues right now is that the, the, the youngsters of this game know how to hit this kid or this guy. Well, like, his, I mean, like, his fast pitch tendencies and moving his shit all the way is fucking crazy. Yeah, like, man, it, it was it was bound to happen though, man. He'd be like, like, let's be real. The guy was in Houston. He was pitching his the great things in Houston, going to the World Series, doing everything he had to do. Like everyone had scouting on him, everyone had video on him. So it's gonna come out that okay, well, these are paid athletes, paid professionals. They're gonna look at the tape and they're gonna find out how to hit Garrett Cole. Despite 
Vladdy having the night of his life in that third game. That kid's something else, man. Let me tell you. Right. He might be better he's, than, he's than his dad. Oops, did I say that too early? <laughs> <laughs> he's just Cole unbelievable. Pitch, Cole pitched five and a third with six Ks and one hit given up. Yeah. Everybody else in that lineup, yeah. not one hit. I know. So Vladdy had the night of his life. He was looking inside all but night. But Danny, let's not forget, though, he also struggled against the frigging um, – the uh, God. Red Sox, Rafael Devers, as well, like always, he always leaves that pitch up high for he him. Doesn't it? He never shut them down after three innings, though. So, despite the bad, there's still a lot of good with Garrett Cole, mm -hmm. right? The three shutout after giving up the three spot in the first, and then five and a third, essentially without Vladdy in there, of one hit with six Ks. The mm -hmm. stuff is there, right? Guys are not hurting him the way the stars are hurting him, obviously. You want him to get Vladdy out, but sometimes one of the greatest hitters of all time, well, I want to say greatest hitters of all time, but one of the great hitters of his generation right now um, is going to have it the night, and he, and he had his number last night, and that's, that's all, well, in, in game three of that series, and that's all that was. Hey, but he didn't have anything last night. No, he didn't, and Sevy oh, shoved. Four. Sevy shoved. Sliders, change-ups, and that's all he threw him. I think he saw – Mm -hmm. Yeah, slider, cutter, change up, whatever the case may be. But he was throwing him all speed pitches, and he got him out three times. So and, you know he changed. He he, he expanded the zone, and uh, Sevy was not getting him anything to hit. So Dan, to answer your question, Aaron Hicks played in thirty two games last year. Yeah, I said thirty, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So well, since we're on the topic of this team's pitching, right? What we think about uh, um, Gumby's first start? I think he did great. Other than mm -hmm. getting, uh, you know, basic practically kneecapped by a line drive at 103 miles an hour and dropping like a dead moose on the mound. Um, yeah, I I think he's doing great. Uh, I got no issues. I love what I see from him. The, the biggest thing for him last year was the guys weren't scoring runs for him. You know, just like today. Just yeah, like, really? like I don't know what it is with Jordan Montgomery. Every time he's on the mound, he can't get any run support. But then they'll go and score, you know, four, five, six, seven runs for guys like Tyone and Cole and everybody else. And then you know you got Monty over there going, "Hey, like, what about me, guys?" <laughs> I mean, we're we're getting screwed right now. It's the bottom of the ninth right now, and it's one one. So yeah, Got it's bottom one nine, run. one on, one out, one one game. Yep. So this team should have been buried ten nothing by now. Yeah, it's the Orioles, and we're having we're, we're struggling right now. This is like, yeah, ridiculous. painful, absolutely painful. Uh, but it's, it's April. the bats. We got to get it going. We have to get it going, some way, somehow. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure what it's like throughout baseball, but I think we're a veteran team for the most part. Mm -hmm. So when you have a veteran team with a short spring, and guys are still getting their bearings, you know, with 50. 60, 70 at bats that they're used to in spring training, and they have to come out here and perform. Not giving them an excuse or anything like that, but that could be a reason as to why they're getting up to a slow start. You know, you, have, you see some flashes here and there. Like Rizzo came out swinging, um, Giancarlo came out swinging, mm -hmm. Judge hit his first homer. So, guys, it's going to come around. Glaber had his first homer. It's going to come around. I, I'm a little concerned with the bottom of the lineup. Mm -hmm. um, IKF, I think he's struggling you? really bad. Right I, IKF now. last night though. IKF was showing some signs that he might be waking up. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Three for three. Yep. Mm -hmm. Those balls were hit hard though. So they. I'm not getting they, they no one hundred percent. One hundred percent. I'm like they, they. It was a lot of luck in this. It's like yes. Perfectly right. placed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like sure. even that one that hit um I forgot whose glove but it hit the glove and then just popped right out of it like. He got the was Bichette's, I think it was Bichette's glove. I think it might have been. You might be right. But, like, it was ridiculous. And he needs to do what he needs to do. But I'm hoping this helps him with the confidence and helps him get his timing. And maybe he just gets the ball a little bit higher and more, like, right in between the infield and outfield. Not well, Cameron Maven, Cameron Maven was talking to him before the game tonight. And um, he was saying about how – he was so overwhelmed with putting that uniform on. Like Danny's been saying, sometimes the pinstripes are just heavy on people. And he oh, openly admitted that he feels the pressure. You know, the, he said that he walked through Monument Park and kind of took it all in. Um, so I can kind of see where he's coming from. Hopefully he's waking up. Uh, Higgy needs to figure it out. Jose Trevino last night was 
pretty impressive to watch. Um, so he stole I a think, base. <laughs> yeah, a catcher stealing a base. How many times do you see that? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Yeah, I think, guys, that the only thing that we can probably say is it's not that it's hard, but when you come out right out of the gate and you have basically three series against your own division, right, Red Sox, Blue Jays, and now Orioles, and I hate to say it, games like tonight, like, they shouldn't be this difficult to win. In all honesty, whether it fits your ace on the mound or your fifth pitcher on the mound, even even without judge tonight, right? Once again, though, and I think Danny and, you know, we kind of – we kind of just already talked about it. It's you, you can't win every game trying to hit the home run. You got to be able, able to move people over, work the baseball game, hit, get it going, create some momentum. And tonight's just been one of those games that you really can't really pinpoint the exact. I guess trying to find a phrase here, the exact moment where you know. Well, we we all know the moment that should have happened when they had the bases loaded. The bases right? loaded when they grinded into that double play. Yep. You know, when Hicks didn't swing at that 3-0 pitch and he swung at the next one, I thought he should have swung at the 3-0 on that middle down sinker. Now, again, I'm not at the plate. I'm not a baseball player. But that's a – you know, I did play Little League, and it did tell me when the pitcher is down 3-0 on you with bases loaded, his first pitch, more than likely, he's not going to try to have you force it. He's going to want to put it down the middle – and see what happens, and he didn't do it, and then he hits into a double play, and you're like, okay, here we go again, right? Basically, it's just crazy. I, I think in that situation, um, he was trying to play a little hero ball. He did a good job on a 3-0 pitch because now all the time, like, you want to see the pitcher throw a strike. You want to make sure that he's in the zone, right? So that's why he takes a 3-0 pitch, and Hicks is naturally a, a patient hitter. So um, – that's most most likely the reason why he took that 3-0 pitch. Now, swinging at the 3-1 pitch, I was listening to him on the radio. Um, I'm not sure what the location was, but uh, was it in the zone? How, how, how did it look? So if I remember, it was a sinker basically, not in the middle, middle, but middle outside, but still in the box, which, again, mm -hmm. you know, he's trying to pull the ball this way, and I think David brought it up to him. He has this side open, but he wants to pull it mm -hmm. this way. Mm -hmm. And that that and that's the same side where he hit the double play ball. It's basically mm -hmm. where everybody's at and doesn't yep. want to bat it the other way, you know, at least to create contact, you know, because you never know. So yeah, so maybe that's yeah. why he under the swing at it is because he knew if he hit it, it's gonna go in that direction and not his favorite, which is it, which is his side, which again, when he hit the ball in the next pitch on his side, it was a double play. Mm -hmm. That's that's him playing hero ball. That's that's all that is. That's Trying him. to force the issue. Trying to, exactly. All right, so let's get back to the to the to the home stand. Um, when it comes to starting pitching, we all the pitchers in that series pitched well. We had yes, two shots against. Yep, and I'm really bullpen. I'm really encouraged by Tyone. I really am. Me to too. come to pitch the rest of last year basically on one ankle and come back and you know he got that took that loss in game two I think it was against the Blue Jays and his only mistake was giving up a two run game one. Sorry, and only his only mistake was giving up a two-run home run to George Springer. I mean, that, that's not that's not bad. <laughs> and Nestor, Nestor just kept on going on from what he was doing last year. Just kept it up this year. Like he did not even like it didn't even go like off season. What off season? He just like still being a Cuban missile. <laughs> like he's the you know Cuban missile. Like Forget you, Chapman. You were nothing last night. <laughs> you were the Cuban like, like walk. <laughs> I think what makes Cortez so successful is he's constantly messing with his arm angles and dropping down oh my doing all this weird gymnastics shit on the on the mound it's it's and beautiful. he's able to throw it throw frisbees for strikes it's just what? nuts <laughs> I, I think that's the most important aspect about Cortez is that he's fearless in the strike zone like he's mm -hmm. always in the strike zone and even though he's throwing 90 to 93 touching 94 here and there it strikes you know and, and like Dave said when you're coming at different angles, you're not really sure as a hitter where it's going to come from. And uh, when you're constantly behind in the count, it doesn't matter what the guy's throwing. The no, hitter is in defense it, mode. It, 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 100%. 100%. Like, I, I love – I yes, the heater. I love the heater. Everyone loves the heater. But my favorite pitcher is Greg Maddox. Why? Because he likes to put it into location. He wasn't the fastest pitcher out there, but his pitches were in the correct location. Very, to get the strike. very – mechanical and he had a flow to it and, and <laughs> he would always try to try to guess as hard as he could at what 
was coming. You know, for sure. sure. Mm-hmm. You know, I can, I can, I can definitely see that. And yeah. he didn't throw oh, hard yeah. either. He uh, threw X, at a at a X most X low nineties, <laughs> mid eighties to low nineties. Well, a nasty two seamer back in the day. What I liked about Tyon um, is his mechanics looked a lot more athletic. Like he had an actual rhythm to to what he was doing out there on the mound, and he was also throwing. He was more in control. Mm-hmm. Well, I think Danny froze. Yeah, he froze. Uh-oh. He's frozen uh, in time. <laughs> Tyone threw a strike, but then the ump said ball. That's, that's what ends up happening. That's what I, there we go. Now he's back. Danny, please, please, uh, please uh, finish your point. What was the last thing you guys heard? That Tyone had a great command. Really? And he looked more athletic on the mound. He, he looked like he was in control of his stuff without having to pressure yeah. too much. Yeah. yeah. And he, he got kind of multifaceted. Last year, he was high four seam breaking ball. This year, slider, the breaking ball, the the fastball to four quadrants, the two seamer. So he's he's not the same Tyone that most of these guys in the division faced last year, um, and he, that's a great adjustment that he made to to go back to that two seamer and and be more of a complete pitcher rather than one dimensional. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And in game one, Manoa, man, uh, he's so cocky. He is so cocky. Oh, I hate him. That's like, just generational ball players, bro. Get used to it. It ain't going away. <laughs> no, no. There's a certain level of brash that you guys that these guys have, but I feel like Manoa. It's most likely because he's not a Yankee. Because if I if he was a Yankee, I would most likely love him. But since he's on the <laughs> other side, I hate him. Type of type of thing. Yeah. You know. So he he's just a brash dude, and and he shoves against us too. Not only does he you know, kind of show out you know, all these gyrations and screaming and yelling and all this stuff, but he shoves. So, so I'm update, glad, Stevie. We okay. got 1-1, one, one, top 10, ghost runner on second, judge at the plate. So let's go. Please win this game. Please win this game. That's all I ask. Anyway. But yeah, the, this series was very encouraging from a pitching aspect. The offense just needs to wake up. I'm getting a little sick of Josh Donaldson and his lack of ability to be a true leadoff hitter and get on base. Um, but I think the rest yeah, of the lineup's nice. doing, doing good outside Joey Gallo. And you know, going back, to, I don't. <laughs> I'm trying really not hard not to bash our team right now. But I was listening to the radio broadcast with Susan and John the other day, and Susan asked Gallo about his approach at the plate at the end of spring training. And his response was, well, this is just the type of player I am. I strike out 200 times a season. That's just me. There's nothing I can do to change it. It's like, are you, are you kidding me with this right now? Like (laughs) it just goes right through me when guys are just throwing their hands in the air. Well, that's it. This is who I am. Deal with it. No trash. Stop. Maybe, maybe he tried the other way and it just didn't work for him. In, in Texas, know, what like what if what if he tried to hit the other way, and it just led to more swing and miss? But at least make contact with the damn ball is what I'm saying, man. But he like has his been. his strikeouts are awful. I mean, they they they're god awful. He's not missing by a little bit. He's like swinging at stuff low away in the dirt or high. Well, I haven't high seen the last couple. I haven't seen today, so I'm not sure what. Well, the only bet I saw was he, against. Jorge he looks Lopez. like he's swinging a golf club at a golf ball. Is what it looks like. It's gonna happen though. But to start off the season, he was swinging and making contact and hitting the ball hard. It just wasn't falling for him. But I get what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. So who knows? Hopefully, it figures it out. I'll take. I mean, anything you're gonna get out of Galvin Hicks is just an added bonus at this point. Um, same thing with yeah, Andy. but at some point though, guys, we need a little bit more better consistency at the bottom end. Oh, of absolutely. Up. But but again, I think Danny probably convinced me in about 10 minutes ago, and I do understand it's not when the pandemic happened, right? Where you knew you only had 80 games. There's 160 plus. You're coming right out of the gates against divisional opponents. 
Um, you know, at some point though, these are human players, right? So at some point, yeah. you know, if you haven't been playing well, something's going to crack or snap. If not, guess what happens to you? You either get left out of the lineup or you get released. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I'm not at that point of getting all worried and some, but like, again, small ball has to get better and more production out of the five, six down spots. That's, you know what I mean? Because that's, at the end of the day, that's all this team, not that's all that they need. But if you have that a world that could balance out with the top of the lineup, which we already know what we have up there, I mean, this team can actually become one of the most mm-hmm. lethal offenses in this game. And mm-hmm. it, all, it all depends what happens at the back end. Can they be consistent enough, right? When the when the top guys are not hitting homers and they're on base, what do these guys in the back end do? What can they do? That's what we're yeah. asking. Yeah, that's, why I've always, come through. that's why I've always said I'd rather have – five to six guys that battle over 300 and three or four guys that can hit 40 home runs. Balances out. You know? That's the string the hits together and get RBIs. RBIs win games. On-base percentage does not win games. I'm sorry. I don't care what anybody says. RBIs and base hits and high batting averages win games to go with stud pitching. So it's just the way it is. Yeah. Well, Yankees, you know, pitching. <laughs> I'm sorry, well, timely hitting. Let me it's rephrase it. Timely hitting. Yeah. Well, it's like the Yankees <laughs> are second in big leagues right now in, in ERA. Well, it's 249 yeah. ERA. Yep, 249 behind the Astros, I believe, right? Yeah, we'll have like a 169, which is ridiculous. But uh, the bullpens look great. Uh, I think you could expect more from Cole and Seve. Um, Tyone looked good. So our front four are pretty, pretty decent, man. I think yeah. at the top of their game, well, at least the top three, and, and I'll probably put Tyone over Monty in this mm-hmm. specific conversation. Like I did, Cole. I did, I did tell you, Danny. I think towards the end of the season, I th- I put Tyone ahead, and not because I don't believe in Monty, but I think Tyone after last season, he had a little bit of a bad break as well. He wasn't getting any runs. He was getting into fifth, sixth inning type of games, but either the game was tied, and by the time he entered in those specific you know times. He either walked a guy or two, and then he got pulled, and then either the game is tied or they're down by one or two. So I yeah. think this season, it's you know, hopefully it's different for him, but I I expect him to be this team's third at the end of the day. And not saying that again, Gummy can become that, but if Gummy can at least just give you a decent start and be consistent with it, that gives you a little bit less pressure for Cole to go out there every single time and try to create magic. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right. And even going back to last season. Tyone won seven straight games. He was seven and zero at one point at the, in the second half. It was just like, who the is this raised. pitcher? Because I was shitting on him hard in the first half of the season, and then after the All Star game, something just clicked, and he was just downright disgusting. And it was great he, to watch. <laughs> he, he made me incorporate my, my words. <laughs> he incorporated the two seamer last year at, at the at the break. Mm-hmm. He he got away from just being a one dimensional pitcher. And he's even expanded upon that this year, which is my point was going to be was that I think Cole, Sevi, Tyone at the top of the lineup potentially are all stars if they continue pitching well. Um, and guys that at the top, I will put against almost anybody in, in the American League East. Well, in the American League in general, you know, you got the White Sox with their, with their really good pitching. The Astros you've seen are proving it again that they, they're, they're here to compete. But the Yankees rotation is better than the Red Sox. The Yankees rotation compete can compete with the Blue Jays, and we saw that two shutouts yeah. in a four game set. I mean, outside of Tanner Hawk for the Red Sox, they're, they're okay. But Tanner Hawk, that kid is just unbelievable. So yeah, I mean, I mean they got Evo Hawk, and then. Who else? Are, yeah, I but if all these kind of hit and miss, you don't know which of all these is going to show up. The, the uh, one that I mean, he had gives like a one, one nothing shutout, year. or the one that gives up three or four runs a game. So, you know, not that's saying it's the, trash. That's the evil that you knew for the Yankees. He didn't evil pitch for bad for New York, man. He won fourteen games one year out of his yeah, two but he years was here. Inconsistent. He still won fourteen games. You know, right? But he was so inconsistent. That doesn't. <laughs> How what was his ERA? I don't even know, but that what was his FIP? There's so many things I could go in, into detail about this, but Evo now with the Red Sox is nails, and 
you know, he's at the top of the conversation for a reason. So, oh, boys, to give you a little bit of a game update right now, um, Judge, I believe, struck out and Gonzalez struck out. So still – Judge right? Judge grounded out. Judge grounded out. Mar- Marwin yeah. struck out. So, yeah. yeah. Trash. Got to figure out a way to win this game, man. I, 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 yeah. I can't. I can't. I can't go to bed on a Friday night knowing that we lost the first game of the series to Oreo to the Baltimore Orioles. So, Danny, in 2015, Nathan Evaldi was 14-3 and with the Yankees. 420 ERA, 27 games and starts, 154 and a third innings pitched. Uh, 10 home runs given up, 49 walks to 121 strikeouts. FIP 3.42. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying that he was bad, but he was inconsistent, just like you were explaining. And then uh, I'm just saying that you were right. But yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a different type of guy. Anyway, yeah. uh, I Tommy John will do that much, to you. Yeah, <laughs> I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure we we pretty much wrapped up the series, though. You know, we did yeah. a good job, and uh, just they just need to step on Baltimore's throats when they play them, and that's yep. simple as that. I mean, they, yep. this this team has been a the, the Orioles team has been a dumpster fire for the last seven years, and the fact that you can't go in and bury a team like this. I mean, they went up against Jordan Lyles. Really? No. I mean, he, the guy pretty much pitched, and he pitched in Colorado and Texas and was like, eh, at best. And they have, and the Orioles have no offense. You no, can't Cedric Mullins, Ryan Mullins. Well, I mean, outside of the Mullins, Mount Castle, and, and uh, Austin Hayes. Austin Hayes, yeah. Um, they There's not much really there. don't have anything. So you, you but guys they got the hype man. They got the hype man of all MLB, Rugi Odor. Yep, yep. You guys ready to get to uh, the polls for the week? Let's do it. Bunch. Do it. And then we'll we'll, we'll end up with the uh, with the slap of the week as well. Mm-hmm. Give me a second here so I can pull that up. I'm like the Orioles' uh, call to the bullpen. I'm very slow right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is of last night's game. Uh, who, who gets slappy of, of tonight's game, which happened last night? Um, Dan, you can go ahead and read the uh, results. Yeah, we got Sevi when that uh, – well, actually, no, he came in second in that vote. 40%. Mike King, Mike King got 50% and 20 votes. Uh, Mike King, man, way to step up. Rhode Island in the house. <laughs> Bishop Hendrickson. <laughs> I have no soul. <laughs> Did anybody vote for that? No, zero. Percent. Nah. Nope, zero. Yeah. <laughs> this Good. opening week was very, very encouraging. So for our our uh, audience that can't watch us right now that are listening, the poll reads: Who else woke up feeling good about the homestand? So this was this was actually tweeted out today, right, guys? Right? Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Yes. So. So we have 87% that says me, 30% says not moved, and 0% says I have no soul, which thankfully nobody voted for that. How are you not moved? <laughs> How are you not moved by opening week, but by the opening week we had? We went I'm telling you, three. man. What more do you want? It, it, it feels the perfection. Like, it, it really feels like zero wins. Zero losses. It really feels like this fan base is, is divided into three, into the positives and negatives, into the ones that I don't care right now. That's See, what it feels. No, 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 no. This team could go 160 and all, and it wouldn't matter. No, no, no. It's the positives, the negatives, and then everyone that's a bunch of old boomers that think that, like, you know, back in 1960, whatever, that, you know, they were only the perfect teams back then, so we have to be perfect, too. Like, get out of here. Yeah. Back in my day, we could drink and smoke in the dugout. Yeah, all right, Grandpa. Back in my show. day, we didn't <laughs> use seatbelts. What's a seatbelt? Back in my day, we drank turpentine. <laughs> And dip spit <laughs> every every, every time. miles in the snow. <laughs> Not to get off topic, but every time somebody says "back in my day," just makes me reminiscent when Michael Jordan's uh, first episode when he got drafted in his in his show and his uh, mm-hmm. thing was like, "Yeah, when I got drafted by the Bulls, I went to the hotel and I opened the door and there's booze and weed everywhere, and all I wanted was a seven up." It's great. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, back in back in your day, that was the case where people were smoking at halftime or drinking beer. Facts. <laughs> All right, guys. So okay. go ahead. Let's go ahead with this one. 
All right. The while, next the one damn is, while the damn Baltimore Orioles are still trying to figure out which pitcher to put on the mound. Yeah. <laughs> fine. We're going to have the uh, water boy pitching tonight pretty soon right there. They're going. Um, so the next one is, do Higgy and IKF take a seat on the bench tonight? Uh, 58.5% says they should. Uh, 34.8% said no. And 8.7% say hell yeah. Well, guess what? You guys are all wrong because the IKF needs to be out there. That's last night. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's this was for last Not night. playing them I, is not going to help their consistency at the plate. Sorry. <laughs> I hate to yeah. break it to you. I, I really can't stand the people that are, like, super negative and just just want to crap on every player and just be like, oh, this guy sucks. And I only have one player yeah. I got to crap on, and that's um, Gleyber Torres. <laughs> that's right. it. Right. <laughs> but it's like those guys who are – you know, oh, yeah. behind, the, I agree. behind I agree. the computer, just punch in whatever, and they have they never play past the league. They couldn't do what these guys do, but they're the ones that are talking the most crap. So yeah. I just can't stand it. I, I'm here to support my guys, and I want us to win. And you know, I feel like there's a positive in, in everything. Oh, by, the way, on the mound. Um, by the way, uh, I'm talking about supporting our guys. I want to give a huge shout out to our uh, our our. our uh, our guy, uh, Brandon, right? He had the game-winning homer, yeah. right? Did a home run, right? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, man. That's – that's hey, only here on the Bronx with Chachos will you have that, man, right? We, we have a guest <laughs> on. We give him that extra oomph. It goes out there. Yeah. Man, just creating magic. So, mm-hmm. hopefully the team is seeing that, man. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, for this cool. one, we have um, Mochacho slap of the day goes to which player? Higgs had this nine was points. for the April 12th game. Yes. Yeah, this was on Tuesday. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, Higgs yep. had 9.4. Which was a great rebound game that we had against Toronto because mm-hmm. the night before it was just a excuse. Yeah, we got shut out. Gleyber Torres three point one, DJ zero, and the winner was Nestor with eighty seven point five. That was a hell of a As game. If there he was pitched. any doubt, everyone that voted for Gleyber Torres, there, there, yes, there was because you know the, those Hicks fans. They actually thought Hicks was important. Mr. Glassman <laughs> hit the okay. hit the two run homer. <laughs> this, Ooh, wow. is the tweet. this is the tweet the day after the the loss against Toronto. The uh, Black <laughs> oh Yankee. my god, <laughs> this is such a Yankee fan feeling. Bro. This is Yankee Twitter coming out all the way right here. The sky falling, Armageddon's upon us. <laughs> Somebody sky called Bruce Love. Take it, man. You take this one. Who the hell came up with these responses? They're actually absolutely brilliant. This oh, is I how did. Yankee Twitter is for sure. I, I got my suspicions. <laughs> so, guys, so. Obviously, we all saw what happened on Monday night, especially Cole. Well, we that. Um, so, so the day after, is the sky falling yet? Is tonight is tonight a must win? I mean, Garrett Cole thought the sky was falling on <laughs> April 7th against the Red Sox between Billy Crystal Listen, and the Death Star I, sounds. Um, <laughs> the Yankee, by the way, that is so you know, new, right? When, when, when the count is at two strikes, we all hear – that uh, mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. it might yeah, be okay. I thought so. I'm like, is that something new? Right, that's definitely something new. No, they've been doing it for a couple of years. Garrett, star. Garrett Cole just needs to shut up and pitch. It's like the stop, damn trade generation's about to come out and start <laughs> blasting people. <laughs> like, what the hell? Going on here? Garrett so, Cole just needs to shut up and pitch and stop 50, crying. Uh, the hell yeah, went with 50 percent. Just another game went to 35.7, which those are the people which I'm telling you, they're waiting for the all star break. And then you have the 14.3, the sky's falling, season over. Those type of fans called WFAN said the season was over. So <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. Oh, man. You, you mean funny. Michael from Hoboken? Yeah, that guy. <laughs> and I think that's it, guys, right? We any more? Okay, no, we have one yeah, here. There we go, one more. This was for the April 11th game. It happened Monday. Well, obviously, we know the results for Monday. I mean, we were all – Trying to be positive here, right? Who gets off today? We, we you know, we said Gallo. We were all hoping it was him. <laughs> that vote ended at 45.5. <laughs> Second in Donaldson at 31.8. Um, Iggy was 18.2. And other comment who was 4.5, which we're not going to get to the who else that would have been. Because that Monday night game was one that we don't want to remember unless you collect uh, Vlad Guerrero's cards, man, right? It's something something totally different. Let me see mm-hmm. what else we got. What else we got? Uh, we hit a thousand followers on Twitter. I think we're at a oh, thousand thirty-seven. So yes, that's right. we did. We did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for everyone that's following us. Um, this one here, obviously, this on um, April eleventh as well. How's everyone feeling about the first series? Good at ninety-five point one. Always good when you beat your rival. Uh, Four point nine. Worried. 
those are the Hicks fans. I mean, it's cool. <laughs> 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 Yeah, 41 um, volts. I don't know how many people that is. What is everybody's thoughts on the K-Rod show? Nobody loved it because it was 73% eh. <laughs> and unless you have ESPN2, you couldn't watch it. So there's that. True. True. I, I tuned yeah. into it for a little bit. You know, it was just... Is it like they, ESPN they, Plus, I mean, too, like with everybody who has ESPN now? Yeah, so they brought Roger Clemens on for a little bit. Yeah, no, I saw that it. part. Yeah, I like that part with Roger Clemens. That was good. Um, they had Ortiz on for a little bit, but it's just basically K and A Rod just sitting there watching the game, and K's calling it's it like baseball. he baseball. No, but no, it's baseball's. Damn, Dave. I mean, it's it's baseball's version of doing um the Manning brothers on on Monday Night Football. That's all it yeah. is. No, I know what it is. I'm just saying with baseball, it's kind of tough to do. I think because with football, it's, there's no. constantly sh- shit going on. So it, it's not tough to do. It's just the, the, the problem is that A-Rod doesn't have any personality. And like, oh no, <laughs> Michael K is going to say a question that, oh no, A-Rod doesn't like. Oh, like, he's going to do that. <laughs> well, it's a known fact that the two can't like stand this. each other. So like, why put them in the same room if they can't stand I each other? Like, it's change, I think that changed though. I think they actually do get along now. Uh. I think that, that, that changed after... um. A round left baseball, but they actually got along with each other. Well, I guess that's what happens when you stick two people in a room and tell them that they have to get along <laughs> together, I suppose. I like the big head jokes for, for Michael K. Those oh my gosh, really Jeff Passions was the was the oh king on that God. one. Jeff Passion destroyed him. <laughs> All right. Well, All right. I think that about wraps up tonight. Uh thank you for everybody that has been tuning in along these last 20 weeks and going forward glad to have you along for this ride if you got apple podcast make sure to hit that subscribe button give us a five-star review it only helps us get better also we got an awesome ad at the beginning of each episode now just do us a favor listen to the ad helps us out helps us create more content um also we got the facebook group we got the bronx Pachachos mafia page which is at 247 strong right now and growing immensely uh, we have a game day chat on Facebook Messenger going on, which is completely off the walls. Fun, by the way. Um, everybody on Spotify, you can listen there. Castbox, Anchor FM, Apple, and check out the link tree, which has got all the links for all of our content for our YouTube channel. Uh, you can catch the video of the episodes there on YouTube. So check that out. Hit that subscribe, and uh, make sure on Twitter you got your notifications enabled so you see all of our tweets when they come out. Um, and if you like what, I, what we're doing, we put on a new episode, retweet the episode, helps us get exposure and helps this project we got going along grow. And to the international audience, our podcast just hit Australia the other day. So shout out to everybody in Australia, Brazil, Colombia, Venezuela, Mexico, Puerto Rico, Ooh. Germany, Ireland, France, Ooh. Canada, UK, and the United States uh, and Brazil of all places. Uh, which was worldwide. A real shock. <laughs> Bronx Muchachos International. Uh, but seriously, thanks for everybody's support. Thanks for listening. And for Manny, Alex, and Danny, and Mark, who's – it's his birthday today. Shout out to him. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Mark. Happy birthday, Jefe. And, um, you know, couldn't sign off without at least acknowledging that it's the 75th anniversary of Jackie Robinson breaking the color barrier April 15th, 1947. Um, I finally got a chance to watch the movie 42 and what that man had to go through and endure and to be able to keep his cool the way he did. I got mm-hmm. hell of a lot of respect for that man and everybody that came after him to make this game as great as it is for every, everybody of every diverse uh, group. So mm-hmm. happy Jackie Robinson day, everybody. And that's going to be it for us. Peace.